Nano Hub U. Online instruction. Hey everyone, welcome to lecture 218. This is light trapping with metasurfaces. So last time we actually showed what a metasurface is. It's basically like a mirror that reflects at a, an angle that's different from the angle of incidence. And then second, we showed a simple example of what kind of computation we can do in S4. And now we'll continue to look at like the impact of metasurfaces on light trapping and solar cells. Here's basically uh, the results. So we showed that uh, for normal incidence, we actually get a lot of deflection into the so-called plus one mode that's uh, trapped inside of the observer. And so here's basically uh, the simulated structure, and then here's like the typical absorption in the ultra thin layer in blue. And then this is compared to a baseline, which is a structure with no metasurface in the back. And so you can actually see that at many wavelengths, there's a big enhancement, maybe from something on the order of 10% absorption, close to 100% at certain wavelengths. But there's also like regions where the absorption is not as good. And that could potentially be attributed to the fact that you don't get the metasurface effect at all incident angles. And so it may be hard to uh, implement that multiple times. And there may be potential to improve the design performance. And so then as the next step, we'll actually look at a different structure, which is conceptually very similar, but it would physically be implemented a different way. Here, basically, you can see that there are a bunch of metallic ribs, if you will, and then each of these ribs has a different width. And so uh, I like to call this the xylophone structure because it's essentially just a single material, but then uh, each of the bars is a different size. And so you can think of uh, each of the bars in xylophone has a different resonant frequency. And much like uh, that kind of system, then each of these uh, bars has its own optical resonant frequency that gives rise to a different phase shift. And so the result is that you can have actually very strong uh, deflection into this plus one mode. And you can see here, if we calculate this in S4, we actually get a much wider range of plus one deflection. And especially like close to normal incidence over a broad range of wavelengths, it's a very pronounced peak of plus one and very little uh, background. So that's very interesting. This is showing like the field patterns that you can actually display in S4, uh, showing in particular, you can see in this one, it looks pretty much like a plane wave reflection like here, which is, uh, you know, for a normal incident wave, uh, exciting it, which is very nice uh, result, kind of illustrating our physical concept that we had earlier. And then in terms of the performance, what's interesting about this system is it has a more uh, selective range of enhancement, uh, but then presumably for most photovoltaic applications where the observer is not just uniformly absorbing over all wavelengths, in fact, the so-called kramers kronig relationship usually requires that you have regions of uh, weaker and stronger absorption in most materials, then you basically end up with uh, a big enhancement, which is very consistent over these slightly longer wavelengths. And then these can actually be tailored to hit maybe from about 500 to 1000 nanometers. And so this might be very helpful for something like crystalline silicon, which has relatively weak absorption for very thin form factors, like less than a micron in absorbing light. So this actually could greatly benefit that sort of problem. A lot of these results are discussed in this paper from Optics Express, and then there's follow-up paper that was published in uh, MRS conference proceedings afterwards. And then uh, one thing that's interesting to show is like, why does it not behave perfectly kind of based on our ideal expectations? So you can actually model that as well. And so what you can do is based on the fact the xylophone structure has slightly different resonant at every frequency, you can kind of break it down into its elementary subunits and then model each of those in S4 and then look at the phase shift as a function of position. So basically like for each different bar, you can determine like what is kind of the ideal set of widths that will give you a uniform phase front. And then how does that change uh, with angle? And so you can see here kind of what's happening. So, you, so basically at incident angle of zero, you have like perfectly flat phase front, uh, which is what you 
ideally expected. So in other words, the gradient of phi is a, a fixed value. But then on the other hand, you could potentially have uh, this uh, phase factor here that goes up like this and then back down like this. And then uh, the final thing that I want to show is that not only could you enhance uh, selective absorption in photovoltaics, but you could also enhance selective emission. And so what this is showing here is the same structure again, but actually uh, being filled with uh, rare earth material. And then the rare earth material actually has uh, emission at all angles, not just one angle into the air. And then uh, it actually emits uh, differently with different polarization. So there's some degree of polarization sensitivity, but you can also see there's a strong degree of enhancement of emission at these shorter wavelengths from about like 1100 to 1600 nanometers. And so for some applications like thermophotovoltaics, where you're trying to convert heat into electricity, this could be very helpful as an intermediate uh, step to basically uh, selectively emit uh, near infrared or uh, short range inf mid infrared light and then convert that into electricity using a low band gap photovoltaic. And so one of the most common choices for low band gap photovoltaics has a band, band edge around 1700 nanometers. And so it could uh, strongly benefit from this strong thermal emission at shorter wavelengths. And then having this relatively low thermal emission at longer wavelengths is uh, going to reduce the parasitic emission, in other words, the emission that can't be used productively by the system. So in the next and final lecture, I'll kind of go over where what we've seen in this course and where we're going, and then uh, talk about the next unit. Thank you.